In part three, I want to show you how we can use texture maps from old material libraries as a starting point to create new and improved materials. The nice thing about this is we can create materials with either more detail or even just repurpose texture sets to create brand new materials in Alchemist. So let me show you what I've been working on here. I've got these three texture sets or these three materials from a texture set from Airway Textures. Um, Airway Textures were obviously a, a big player in texture sets, and I used one of their texture sets, just a concrete one, uh, to create something like this uh, paver kind of material. And then also I used it to create kind of this parking garage concrete. We have some detail in there with some grunge. And then lastly, this kind of stone tile that we'll use in our lobby. Let me turn that off. Yeah, and we can get just loads of detail using these old set texture sets and creating new materials with an alchemist. So let me show you how to get your old texture maps within here and to start a new material. So in the upper right, we're going to click create a new material. Alchemist is going to warn us. We'll just say, okay, we want to do a new one. Now what I did is I took uh, the texture set, so the bump, diffuse, and spec gloss. We're just going to drag all three in this kind of windowed area on the right, and we're going to say use as bitmap. Now it's going to load three of the images, and if we click on the layer stack there on the right, we see the three images here, and it asks us how we want to use these. So I'm going to go up to Concrete 19, this uh, spec gloss. We're going to click, scroll down, and say specular level. The bump, we're going to tell that that's the height information. And then this last one is going to be our diffuse texture or the base color. Now bear with me here, it doesn't look that great. From here, I'm going to hit spacebar and we're going to say adjustment or in the upper left, if we go up to filters under tools. So we have our base texture here and under adjustment, we can start messing with some of these sliders. So post sharpen intensity, we'll kind of get some clarity back into there. But as I've expressed in the past, Let's go to the height information and kind of start here. I'm going to turn displacement up just a tad, and then we can kind of play with apply modification to normal. This is going to kind of make things a little crazy. And then we need to turn the height scale down to kind of get it back to where we want it. I don't want a lot of height information, but I like that pitted look from concrete. From there, we're going to say ambient inclusion, recompute AL from new height. Click on that. All right. And then let's turn up the glossiness just a bit. We're going to say intensity. If I turn this down, it's going to turn down the roughness. Let me crank this up a little bit. And now that I see that, let's turn this height down even more to something like 0 0.02. Let's see here if I can get that. Okay. All right. So that's looking kind of cool. So let's start with our first material, which was that brick paver. Let's go over to, let's see, generators here. And we'll say pavement pattern. Click and drag that. And pretty quickly, there you go. This is a really cool generator. And there's lots of cool little things to play with, like spacing. There you go, corner roundness. And again with this, just kind of what you want to see out of your material. Let's actually go over to viewer settings. We'll say mesh. And let's do a plane so we can kind of look at this. And I can turn up the displacement a little bit too kind of see what some of these sliders do. So right off, we get some cool little roughness going on or height information there. Something like this uh, tilt intensity is kind of cool because it roughs it up. You don't want to go too far with it. But we can get something kind of looking like paverish like this pretty quickly. Start getting some randomness in some of this, some variation, some breakup. That's kind of cool. Okay. So let's, uh, let's add some rocks in here with another generator. So if I go to filters, we can go down and say gravel generator. If I click and drag that over. Again, we can also just hit space on the keyboard and start typing in gravel and it comes up as well. But let's do, let's see here. We'll turn the quantity up for now just so we can see stuff. I like to turn up the variation to break everything up. Stone size will make kind of larger. Now, random masking, that'll kind of start peeling some of this back. And then we can turn back the quantity a little. Still in height, kind of play with that a little bit. We don't want a lot, right? Just a little. Okay, that's looking kind of cool. I'll turn with the detail on displacement. Maybe we'll turn this down just a smidge. Okay, very cool. So moving on quickly here down to weathering, re weathering, let's add some moss in here. So moss splatter, let that generate again. 
We have this growth method. Again, we could say from the top, which it'll grow on top of the stone. If we say from bottom, it'll just kind of grow in the cracks. So if I start to turn this up slowly, we'll start seeing this kind of filter in there. See that? Again, this would be kind of cool out on a cafe seating area kind of deal. Covering power, we can kind of play with a little bit. But I just kind of want it as a small detail. Yeah, just a little bit in there like that. Let's turn down some of this uh, saturation. Okay. So something cool like that. And then we can add, say, let's just say some dirt. Throw that on there. Kind of add some grunge. We can turn up the quantity, but then turn down some of the contrast and opacity. So it's there, but it's not super prevalent. Okay. Looking cool. Now let's change this to viewers. We'll say round cylinder. And we can kind of look at this, what's going on a little more here. All right. So very quickly, we can get kind of a new material from just that base concrete texture. So let's dial all this back. Let me kill a lot of this stuff here. If I delete and let's get back to just the adjustment here. There you go. So I could have probably kept the dirt. Let's go ahead and put that back. Or actually, I'll say dust. We'll use that one. I could show that to you guys. Pop that on. Now we can kind of turn down the quantity and then lower opacity so that we get kind of a break, a little bit of breakup. If you can notice that in the, the specular or the roughness, we get a little breakup in that. And then there's this cool filter here. If I can get to it called the pattern generator. I'll toss that on there. And it's set to dot spread. If we do something like stripe thin, now stripe thick. There we go, something like that. Turn down the pattern blur. I thought this was kind of cool. And we can do this custom pattern normal, kind of turn that up to make it look like it's a raised surface because it's been painted. Very quickly, we can get a different material altogether. Something like this could be used in like a parking garage or something like that. If I turn this down to 200. Yeah, something like that's kind of cool. So very quickly, you can see how we can just build up different layers and get a lot of different materials out of just this base material. But what I wanted to do is create a, a floor for the lobby that we're in. So let me get rid of the pattern generator and we'll go back and I'll go up here to parquet pattern. Put that on there. And very quickly, we kind of get this stone, stacked stone look, but we're going to dial some of this back. So actually, let me turn down our, our displacement here so we can kind of see that. Cool. We can mess with the width or how many are in the Y with this little slider. And then I kind of like the bevel real small because I want them to be real tight together and real glossy. So let's bring this down to something like... Zero, one, yeah, that's cool. Real tight. Okay, and let's put this underneath uh, the dust and above this pattern layer that we have, we're going to add a, a wood finish texture, or I'm sorry, wood finish filter. Okay, drag this underneath. As these stack, and this I'm going to say varnish. So that gives us that real polished look all together. Now I want to take out this normal information. So let's go back down to adjustment layer. We'll say height. I'm going to turn off the apply modification to normal. And that'll kind of help with some of that. And let's go to parquet pattern and see if we can get some more of this kind of adjusted. So we can kind of play with some of these, this bevel intensity. I can turn that down and get that kind of smoother. Yeah, that's looking kind of cool. And then another really nice slider is this planks contrast. So if I turn this down, we start to lose those individual planks, but they're actually kind of like tile. But if we turn it up slightly, we get some of that variation kind of getting back in, which I really dig, which is pretty cool. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Let's go over to check the view just kind of on a plane. See if it's like, we, if we rotate the environment, see if we like it. Yeah, that's looking really nice. 
All right. So let's get this exported out and we'll pop it into 3ds Max and do a little quick render. Upper right, export, export current view. Now we're going to say the destination path. Let's go ahead and pick that. It's under our, our textures, alchemist, and then we're going to name this, just name this stone floor. And we'll leave this as this SBSAR file so that we can use it in the pl at, with the plugin in 3ds Max. We don't need to adjust the resolution as we can do this within the plugin. So we'll click export and I will see you guys in 3ds Max. Okay, now that we're back in Max, let's go ahead and quickly set up the texture. I'm just gonna kind of breeze through this because we've done this now in both parts one and two, but upper left, we'll type substance, get a little substance node. This reads the material that we created or exported out of Alchemist. Now when we click load substance, we just need to path it to the material that we exported. Okay, and just remember too that it defaults to 512. Let's turn this up to 496 just because, or 4096 just because it's going to be pretty close to the camera, so we want all that detail. Now get it over to Corona. We just click on the node itself, say substance, substance to Corona. It pipes everything out for us. Now we need to select our floor. Let's let it catch up with us. There we go. And click on our material, right click, assign to material to selection. Again, if you don't see it, in your viewport, say show shaded material in viewport. And let's take a look at this. A nice thing is too, is even once we have this material finalized in Alchemist and we export it, we do have customizability within 3ds Max. It's not like we have to, or we're stuck with whatever we ended up exporting. Let's take a look at the floor here. And I noticed after exporting, it wasn't quite as glossy as I wanted it. Now, let's say someone else has authored this material. You don't have access to go back in and adjust these parameters, uh, we can do it here within Max. So let me show you how to do that. So let's go up to the material editor. And I guess my main beef with this is the floor I want it to be really glossy, like almost mirror like finish. So if I go to region, and let me just kind of pull out the floor there. Okay, so double click on this material. Most of that information is coming from this gloss map. Now we can do one of two things. If I drop down here, I can either Oh, let's see if I can get down here. Under maps, here we go. I can either start dialing back some of this glossiness by, let's just say, maybe doing 50% of the glossiness that's coming through. It might not be enough. I might have to do even more. So let's do something like mm, 10%. This will give us some pretty high gloss. Yeah, there we go. But it's still kind of in there. Some of that information is in there, but it's not completely overriding the gloss altogether. So let's do 15%. Uh, just to kind of split hairs here, and we'll let this update just kind of the floor. Okay, that's looking kind of cool. And I'll throw a render up here, and as you can see, just kind of a lot of the detail that ends up coming through within the diffuse, not only the bump that kind of just breaks up some of those tiles, but doesn't come through a ton. And then how nice and reflective this looks, how alive this looks with the rest of the scene. So again, this is how we can take older texture libraries that we have and kind of reuse them, breathe new life into them, create new materials from old texture sets. Now in part four, I wanna cover texturing two objects within Substance Painter. One's gonna have your traditional UV layout and the other one is not. We're gonna be utilizing Substance Painter's new automatic UV unwrapping. So I'll see you guys in the next part.